Well, now that we've dived into the controversy of, of who is an entrepreneur and what is entrepreneurship, let's dive into that other controversy, which the textbook makes a passing reference to, but I wanted to spend a few more minutes on, and that is this idea of entrepreneurs made or born. So I'm curious, where do you stand on that? Do you see entrepreneurs as largely born that way, or is it something that happens in their life that causes them to launch the venture? <clears throat> this is a great question. You can read endless, search it on the internet, you'll read all kinds of opinions many of which are not very informed, but that's neither here nor there. Now, if you come down pretty strongly on the they're born that way side, what that means is you see a series of personality traits as central to a successful entrepreneurship. And so let's take that view for a second. Let's say what traits are there that are really key to succeeding as an entrepreneur? Well, these are the ones that people would typically come up with. And you're, you're, you may have more. You may line through some of these. doesn't really matter. Uh, this is the core of what people would say. And then if you read in the textbook, it says it doesn't really work that way. And I'm going to tell you, if you haven't read the textbook, it doesn't really work that way. What happens is entrepreneurs <clears throat> end up looking a lot like Successful people in all kinds of organization, athletes, um, all, all, all types of, of organizations. And I'm going to use that athletic uh, phenomenon in just a minute. But you would think that these things would correlate. People go, surely risk taking is a way you could determine entrepreneurs from non entrepreneurs, particularly successful ones. It doesn't. I can tell you it doesn't. Now let me give you the rest of the story because you're like, I, you know, you're struggling. You don't know that you believe me, even though the research is pretty solid. Let me tell you why these things don't correlate with successful entrepreneurship nearly like you think they would. So let me explain this basic chart, and this is just a very simplistic chart. On the bottom is whatever trait that you want to talk about, how it's measured. So low risk taking, high risk taking, low optimism, high optimism. And on the vertical axis, you've got this idea of entrepreneurial success. <clears throat> so instead of what you would expect, which is this line that goes like this, more is better, more is better, more is better, you in fact have a curvilinear that says, you know what? The moderate amounts of it are probably optimum, and either pole is bad. Let me explain to you the red box. What the red box indicates is people that are very low in these traits, they never became entrepreneurs in the first place. Once you're over that minimum requirement, if you will, in that area, then there is probably a little bit more is better, and then more and more and more and more and more is worse. Let me illustrate that with a risk taker. Certainly there is risk taking involved in entrepreneurship. But once you become a big risk taker and do not try to drive out risk where possible, then you become foolish and bad things happen. Same, for example, with optimistic. If you are um, Eeyore, from Winnie the Pooh and you just think everything's always bad, you never launched your business in the first place. On the other hand, if you're always everything is rainbows in springtime, then you probably didn't re very realistically approach your planning and your business suffered because to you everything is always rainbows in springtime and everything I do works until it doesn't. Uh, let me tell you the, uh, the one that is probably out there that resonates with the most of you. One of the ones that just seems like it should make the most sense is a high achievers. Uh, a high need for achievement is really, it's not high achievers, it's high need for achievement. Because these are people that just have an innate need to do things and do them very well. So they would seem to be drawn to entrepreneurship. They're not. Why not? If you have a high need to achieve, what is the very worst thing that can happen? You can fail. And so what the research shows is people that are very high need achievers struggle with entrepreneurship because the prospect of failure is just so looms so large for them. And so they find that need for achievement doesn't really type out that well as selecting entrepreneurs from non-entrepreneurs. The point is all of these things are good. They are in fact present in all entrepreneurs, but because too much is a bad thing, doesn't score out like you think it would. There are other reasons why these don't score out like you think they would, and that is this idea of a sportsman. If I had up here a list and said, what does a NASCAR driver, a NFL offensive guard, 
an Olympic gymnast, a bobsledder, and a professional baseball player all have in common? You could say they're all athletes. Some people would say a NASCAR driver is not an athlete. Hmm. Many people would feel vehemently that they are, kind of like that debate about who is and who isn't an entrepreneur. And even though they're athletes and they have certain things in common, such as they compete, they're winners and losers, they have a lot that's not in common. For example, would an offensive guard want to get dietary tips from an Olympic gymnast? Probably not. They need different body styles. Uh, does uh, a, a professional bobsled person want to train like a track athlete? Well, we just saw Lolo Jones in the Winter Olympics, and they find out no. They actually train differently. So the reason I say this is entrepreneurship is such a broad concept, a lot like athletics. And so to try to take a few key things and say this separates people out, it's just not going to work because it's too broad and there are different success factors uh, in all of those elements. So let me tell you the textbook answer from one textbook about who has what it takes to succeed as an entrepreneur. And these are, the, these are the traits or the qualities, which are not so much personality traits, which can be learned, which can be altered, that we see commitment, determination, leadership, opportunity, obsession. These are people that are really trying to make the business work. They are so tolerant of some uncertainty, uh, adaptable, and then motivated. Now, the question is, how would this correlate with our small business owners? And you would see the laydown is actually pretty doggone solid. But then you get to things like, once a small business owner is successful, are they motivated to continue to, continue to try to uh, innovate? Are they opportunity obsessed? Are they always looking for the next big thing and trying to ride that next big thing? So what I want you to take away from this section is don't think about trades. Think about mindset. Because deficiencies in some trades can be compensated for in other trades. I told you I was a fighter pilot. When I learned this stuff about individuals and, entre and entrepreneurs, I had this light bulb go on in my head because I, like probably a good 30 to 50 percent of you, are, are a high, have a high need for achievement. And because of that, failure is terrifying to me. That's probably what would have held me back from launching my own business. But you say, well, wait a minute, wasn't there like a high possibility of failure in being a fighter pilot? Sure there was. But my passion to be a fighter pilot overrode my fear. The same can be true for entrepreneurs. Almost any deficiency in one area can be compensated for in other areas, which is another reason why this whole idea of personalities doesn't type out. Another reason it doesn't type out is because in entrepreneurship there are things called teams. And I'm going to talk about that in the next video.